Hey, you guys. Movie retrospective time. So this was the movie, once again, that uh, won the poll on Patreon. And it's actually kind of good that we're doing this one around this time of year because it's kind of like a Halloween-y kind of movie, I guess. Not technically, but I mean, it's kind of like New England and it seems like it's witches and stuff like that. So yeah, this is The Witches of Eastwick from 1987. Damn. Now, so yeah, now you had never seen this, right? No, I, I had seen this probably like a hundred times. I think I saw this in the theater when it came <clears throat> out. And then I remember like really liking it. And then like I saw it a bunch more times on cable. I might have also had it on VHS at some point, um, but I hadn't seen it for a really long time. So I was like really interested to watch it again. I also read the novel by John Updike. Now, interestingly, I watched, I saw the movie before I read the novel, and actually I liked the movie, so I was like, oh, I'll read the book. The book is a lot different. Like, the first part of it is the same, but I kind of want to get into that a little bit too, but the book was like a lot darker, and it has kind of like another subplot that they completely like took out of the movie. So like the end of the movie. So the movie and book are like not really all that similar, like they're tonally kind of different. Sounds like I would have liked the book. Um, I didn't like the book you though. Like I didn't yeah. really like it. Not not just not because it wasn't like the movie. <coughs> it's just I don't know. I kind of feel like in the book, um, the witches, like the women, were a lot more obviously malevolent. Um, like they did some kind of more fucked up shit than they did in the movie. And Daryl Van Horn, like the devil character that Jack Nicholson plays in the movie, was a also a lot more obviously malevolent whereas like in the movie it's a lot more subtle and like they do bad shit but it's kind of more played for laughs a little bit you know what i mean yeah. whereas in the book the book was kind of like satirical and funny a little bit too but it was kind of more i don't know if i'd necessarily call it a horror story but i don't know but it, it just like had more because like for example in the book and this is absolutely not even referred to in the movie in the book um you know, the he hooks up with the three women and everything like that. But then later on, he actually marries this really, really young woman who was actually like the daughter of, uh, you know, the Felicia character who uh, Veronica Cartwright plays in the movie. So he marries her and the other three women get jealous and do a spell on her and give her cancer and mm. kill her. <laughs> and then after that, like at the end and like the witches don't get pregnant in the book. Um, Daryl Van Horn just leaves, like, at the end of the book with, uh, Jenny's, Jenny is the name of the, uh, <coughs> woman that he, the, like, the young woman that he marries, and he runs off with Jenny's brother, and it's uh, insinuated that they're, <coughs> that they're lovers now, like, mm -hmm. him and the brother, and he just, like, leaves town. So all of the stuff that happens in the movie with, like, the women, like, getting revenge and all that other kind of stuff, that doesn't happen in the book. He just, mm -hmm. like, takes off at the end. It's at least what I remember. So I, it's not the same story. It's not really. I mean, yeah. the first, like, half of it is, yeah. <clears throat> but once um, he marries that other girl, like, it just, it goes in, like, two divergent, completely different divergent directions. But uh, the setup is the same, though. And, like, some of the characters and stuff are the same. So I had forgotten, too, that this was directed by George motherfucking Miller. Who, you know, Mad Max. He did Mad Max. Yeah. He did Fury Road. He did all I mean, he did other, like, family films and stuff, too. Like, he did Babe, like, the, the pig movie, which is actually, like, really, really good, like, for a family film. I think this was kind of his first <coughs> big Hollywood movie. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about this movie, all right? The acting is good, man. Jack Nicholson does a good job as the devil in it. It's got some really good, strong points in it. But there's something about the tone of this movie. It's very kind of late 80s yuppie feeling kind of like wolf remember the they had the damn yeah they kind of had a damn jack nicholson being a damn werewolf but it was and michelle of, pfeiffer was and in michelle that too. and she's in, also in this. she's in this and it's kind of an elevated movie for the older crowd you know what i mean it it just kind of has that tone that that the witches of eastwick was for a boomer a boomer yuppie population that that's who they were targeting at or at least it was supposed to be kind of targeted to them. It might have been a, a faux target. I don't know. Like, we're going to make a movie. It's going to be kind I, of like a piece of... Yeah, I kind of felt like it was targeted toward that. But the yeah. weird thing w about it was that, <laughs> you know, uh, girls in particular, and even some guys that were my age, like in 1987, yeah. so when I was like a teenager, a lot of them really dug it. Even though technically, yeah, like the story is kind of more targeted toward an older audience because the witches, like the, the women, are 
middle-aged, you know what yeah. I mean? And they've all gotten to a point in their lives where, you know, one of them, their husband died, one of them, their husband deserted them, one of them, they got divorced. And then, like, so they're kind of, like, coming into their own, like, now that the men in their they're life free. are gone, and now, now that they're, like, free or whatever. <laughs> so it's almost kind of like a Stella got her groove back kind of situation. But I don't know why, like, people my age, because I was watching some other... um reviews of this and some other reviewers like female reviewers that were my age were talking about how much they fucking loved this movie even though they were teenagers like same age as me like when this came out even though maybe we couldn't relate to some aspects of it i kind of feel like i didn't even like i got that i'm not dumb but it's like i got that whole you know oh they're middle-aged and they're like embarking on a new finding their <coughs> their power their own personality or whatever like after all of this yeah time it, and it's like i got that but it's just kind of like i guess i couldn't really relate to it in the yeah. way that i maybe could relate to it now yeah you know? the, jack nuggerson has the devil his one of his main weapons is uh uh fucking i guess probably like third wave feminism he's using uh fucking a lot of feminist philosophy and then he creates these three feminist witches that end up fucking him over in the end well the thing <laughs> about it is that when he comes there here's the thing like he comes <coughs> there and he knows <clears throat> I mean, if you don't know the story of Witches of Eastwick, it's Jack Nicholson, and he plays the devil. They never call him the devil. Uh, they hint that he's the devil, and he clearly probably is. But he plays a character named Daryl Van Horn, and he comes to the town, and he seduces three of the women. But see, he needs them. He needs them to reproduce, because that's the one thing that he can't do, is have a baby. So he approaches each of these three women in turn, but he approaches them exactly in the way that he knows will work on them. You know what I'm saying? So if they, you know, want to hear, like, a particular thing, like you said, like, third wave feminism or whatever, then yeah. that's what he's going to say. Yeah. Because he's manipulating them, essentially. Yeah. He wants them to have his babies. So he's seducing each one of them, like, in a different way, in the way that's most effective for them. Yeah, when he goes after Cher, he just uses the slut path. I just want to fuck you. Remember that? And that worked somehow. Well, not so much slut, but he's he's like... Um, oh, he was a slut. Well, no, I mean, yeah. he the way that he put it was that, um, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to insult your intelligence by, like, trying to seduce you. I just yeah. want to be blunt and honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at first, that doesn't work because, like, honestly, one of my favorite exchanges... <laughs> in the movie is when he first tried to tries to seduce Cher and he's like kind of like laying on the bed and he's obviously like Jack Nicholson at this point in his life not a sexy man uh really he not was he way. was kind of sexy when he was younger he's very charismatic i'm not yeah. saying that but not like <laughs> physically attractive or not like physically sexy Cher tells him and she, You're yeah, disgusting. and she just basically goes on this big long rant. It's like you know, yeah. intellectually retarded, stupid, and you smell. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I was yeah. just kind of like, that yeah. was like, and he's just like sitting there, like listening to all of this big long fucking yeah. uh, riot act that she reads him, and it's just like so so funny. But then I think that he tried that first tack with her, and he's like, that didn't work. So then he comes at her from a different angle like she starts to leave and then he's like oh where are you going you know you don't nobody needs you anymore like you have a kid but she's old enough to take care of herself yeah. now it's like you know what do you have to go back to you know what i mean there's nobody that depends on you and like you know everybody thinks you're useless and all this other kind of stuff and that kind of like gets to her because you know that's what she was thinking about herself you know what yeah. i mean like i feel like the other two were probably easier because um like Susan Sarandon's character Jane, who is like super, super like conservative, like very, very buttoned up, and She's uh, a house mouse. Yeah, and like she, like her husband left her pr just because she couldn't have babies. She said because they thought that she was uh, barren, as they used yeah. to say. Um, but she's a musician, and so he comes at her from that angle where he's like a really good musician, but he like tries to get like all the passion out of her, which. The thing about this movie that's kind of great is that, yes, he's the devil, and yes, like, bad shit ends up happening, but he does, like, help them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he does kind of help them find their own power, which I don't know was necessarily his intention, you know? I don't know. No, I think he did. He developed them. I mean... Mostly, I don't even know, maybe that was just, like, a side effect. Mostly he just wanted the babies. He wanted, uh, offspring. Yeah. I kind of think it was a trade, though. It, yeah, it, it very well made. He was going to get he was going to get them knocked up, but they were going to they were going to uh, be willing, and the only way they were going to be willing is he charmed the hell out of them, 
and uh, develop and fulfill them, basically, which is kind of what he did. So it was a it was a trade. It was a relationship. But then he uh, then he also made but again I don't know he if got it was mad, just inadvertent. He, him. he yeah. got mad and they yeah. dumped him. And well and two because I think that's why they set this like in such a small uh you know very kind of like very uptight town. Uh I think it's supposed to be Rhode Island, at least that's what it was in the book. I thought it was Connecticut for some reason, but it's not. It's supposed to be Rhode Island. But it's supposed to be like this really really like tight knit community and like when the three of them start going up there and like all having, you know, a uh, <laughs> a little uh, relationship there, all four of them. Harem. Yeah, um, when they start doing that, like yeah. uh, all of the all of the rumors like around town start like getting to them. Where you know Susan Sarandon is in the store with her frizzed out hair, and she's like all sexy now, and all this other kind of stuff. And everybody's just kind of calling her a slut and all this other kind of stuff. Then they can't really deal with it. And I think <laughs> when they when they dump him. It wasn't that. They didn't like that because at first they were like, well, I don't really like having to go around town and getting called a whore all the time because of all the shit we're doing up here. But they actually were, they talked about like not seeing each other after that. But then I think what was the real catalyst for that was when Felicia got killed. Now, Felicia, Veronica Cartwright is in this, like who plays Felicia, who it, this is never explicitly stated, but I always thought in the movie that she was like the fourth witch. But she's, like, one that's on the opposite side of them. Like, they didn't know they were witches, and neither does she. You know what I mean? It kind of took them... Because at the beginning of the movie, like, the three of them, they're just talking about, oh, we were just talk We were all thinking that we wanted it to rain, and that it did rain. And then they start talking about their ideal man, and they kind of conjure him, or, like, draw him to the town. And as the movie goes on, they realize that they have more power than they knew about. So they didn't go out, like, set out to be witches. But the thing about um, Felicia, like, Veronica Cartwright's character, is I think she is also a witch, but because she's, like, super, super religious, um, she doesn't really see her powers that way. I guess she thinks that it comes from Jesus or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But she's, like, the only one that, as soon as Jack Nicholson comes into town she's immediately like, I, you know, we're not having it. There's something wrong with him. And, you know, she doesn't like that he's buying the house, but she's pretty cognizant that there's something else the matter with him too. And I think even later on, she does that. She says that he's the devil. But the funny thing is that early on in the movie, she falls down the stairs and breaks her leg. And then the doctor tells her husband, oh, well, sometimes if you break a bone, like, bits of the bone marrow, like, drift around in your bloodstream and, like, open your brain and, like, make you say crazy shit, which I don't know if that's true no. or not. If any of you, like, I've never heard that. Um, but, uh, but you know, it's whatever. It, it makes sense. But in context of the movie. So they don't know if she's just saying crazy shit because of the leg being broken or if she's, like, actually, uh, you know, if she's actually, like, on to something. But I think she actually has the same kind of, like, witch powers that they have. She's just, like, coming at it from a different direction. But the shit that happens to her, like, she gets so... <laughs> that one scene of her in the church where she's just sitting there and the, the priest is up there, like, giving the, you know, whatever, and she's just sitting there going, whores. Yeah. Whores. <laughs> it's like, it's so fucking funny. Yeah, that character w- was kind of a good character, but I don't know why she was in the movie. I really didn't really know the significance of, of it. Was she the fourth witch? They never yeah. really spelled it out. Well, I think that was implied. I think that was implied. Yeah, it's almost I'm... like she was on the other end of this. She was also a witch, but at the other end of the spectrum, spectrum as the other three. I think they should have defined that and cleared that. What, 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 I'm not really sure what purpose she served in the story. Because she never really met in, met the other witches face to face, did she? I don't. Remember. Not really. She yeah. was almost kind of like I kind of saw her as like the maybe Cassandra character, or she was kind of like the harbinger. Because as soon as he moved to town, like before they even show Jack Nicholson, where everyone's like talking about him, like because they do this build up where you know they're like, oh, he bought that house, and but and everybody's like talking about him, but like it's a weird because no one can like remember his name, and they talk about like how charming he is and everything like that before they even show him. But she's like the only one 
from the jump that is like this is bad he shouldn't be coming here so it's almost like she's the one that but nobody listens to her so i think she was kind of like the cassandra character maybe yeah but i definitely think that she was also had the same like powers i don't think i don't think the, i don't think the concept of her of her character was really developed well enough I, I don't know why it was necessary to even have her in there i mean it, it did pad the movie out some it showed some stuff happening outside that little quartet you know that little harem that he had going i guess she was just a mechanism to show the town you know what I mean? Well, and so you could see what was happening in the town. I mean, I don't really know. And also, yeah, her death yeah. um, is the catalyst for the other three witches refusing to see him anymore. Well, okay. Because so. she dies. They didn't um, know that that was her, happening? Because they thought they were helping him kill her. No, they didn't know. They didn't know? But see, okay. that's the whole thing. Like, Jack Nicholson's mm. character... He's kind of like coming at them in the guise of, you know, I'm helping develop your womanly abilities or whatever because everybody's like holding you down. But then on the same, at the same time, he's also manipulating them into doing shit. I mean, he knew what he was doing. He knew like yeah. when he had all of them together and they were talking about how, how, what a bitch Felicia was. And he's like, have another cherry. Like they didn't know what they were doing. They only realized it <coughs> after that happened like after her husband had beaten her to death it was that whole like cherry pit vomiting scene and all of that kind of stuff and then her husband beat her to death and then they realized why holy did the shit we beat, did that why did the husband beat her to death because he just couldn't take it anymore, couldn't take it anymore. He, can't, he couldn't take it anymore. so why did the girls think that they had something to do with it they did they did well they just made her spit up some pits I, I just don't think i just don't think it's well it was well done you know what i mean just i just think that's hokey um uh, if they were basically just playing a prank on her, they, you know, they didn't kill her on purpose. No, but they felt bad enough that because I think prior to that, like they kind of knew it's like, oh, neat, we have these like little pow <coughs> like powers and we can make stuff happen. And I think they kind of maybe sort of knew that, but like then when it got to that extreme, they were like, holy shit, we can actually like kill people or kind of be indirectly responsible for their death and well, so they, they didn't what was the problem they didn't well they didn't really want to be involved in that you know what i mean because they didn't know they were witches before so you, it's almost like too much of their power got unleashed and they got scared i agree with the devil i agree you take three women who are middle-aged and been neglected and you turn them into super women that they could fly have incredible sex and shit and have children and then they live in this fucking gigantic mansion they'll kill to keep that position because that woman was a threat to them yeah, All right. but I'm just saying they didn't intentionally. Yeah, I, it might have been more intentional in the book. Maybe I can't remember. I don't remember if they intentionally killed Felicia in the book or if they were more aware of what they were doing. Now in the book, they <coughs> absolutely did kill uh, his wife. Yeah, uh, you know Daryl's wife. They absolutely did do that on purpose. But I think that that happened after they figured out oh, like, we can indirectly, like, cause someone's death. And so yeah. then they did it on purpose. You know what I mean? Witches kill people and do shit just by right of nature. As soon as you're a witch and have fucking magical abilities, you're going to kill people. That's what you are. That's what you do. So I think, I think that part of the story was kind of fucking hokey. I mean, they're already with the devil. And they must know that he's the devil. See, I don't know. Because I don't he's know. he's giving them supernatural powers. I know. I don't know if they really... I don't know, because like I said, I always kind of think about... Now, if this happened in real life, obviously <laughs> this is not going to happen in real life. Yeah. But if it happened in real life, just, just you know, theoretically. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe you would see all the positives of it, obviously. Yeah. But I, you would, like, think to yourself, he's not the devil. Come on. Well, they knew he was the devil when he was 30 feet tall running around the outside of the fucking yeah, house. Yeah, but that was at the end, though. Yeah. That was at the end. After they had kind of got... They'd figured that out, and then he said, "Oh my God, he knocked all of us up, and that's what he wanted the whole time was like he wanted them to have babies so he could propagate his little demon seed or whatever." And his, his, yeah, and he had good-looking kids. <laughs> the, the, uh, his, his, uh, his pad was badass. Right? It was, it yeah. It was just like William Randolph Hearst fucking couldn't afford a place like that. You know, it was just a giant fucking stone mansion. You know, looked nice. Something that an old oligarch from the 1800s would have. He was yeah, I can't remember like where where they shot stuff. the exteriors of that because yeah. that's a real house. I'm pretty sure it's like a real <coughs> estate because I've seen it in other movies. Yeah, handmade marble mosaic yeah. floors and stuff is beautiful. 
But I'm not sure where they shot the interiors of that, because, yeah, man, that house was fucking badass. Yeah. So He had beds the size of this room. He you said that it, his one bed, he said it belonged to the Borgias. Yeah, probably right, yeah. <laughs> He said at yeah. that point, that was like one of the funniest. I kind of feel like when I saw this when I was younger, I think a lot of the stuff, like, I didn't really, like, I didn't register as much. Because a lot of the humor in it and stuff is more, I guess, like, adult-oriented or it's, like, kind of more subtle, I feel like. I don't know. This is one of those movies and... I think I was talking about this in a video that I posted earlier today, or uh, earlier this week, about uh, Time After Time, is that in the 70s and 80s, you had these kind of movies that you couldn't really put your finger on what genre they were. You know what I mean? This movie is one of those. Yeah. If you had to tell me that it's like, if you asked me, like, put a gun to my head and said, what genre is this? I would not be able to tell you. Like, it's not a horror movie really, even though it has kind of horror elements <coughs> toward the end, it's sort of a comedy. Sort of a romance. It's sort of a romance. It's sort of a fantasy. There's, like, pieces of everything in it's there. It's sort of a chick flick. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. But it's like there's other stuff yeah. going on in there, too. It's not, like, a traditional standard chick flick because there's, like, witchcraft, yeah. and yeah. then there's, like, fucked up shit happens in it. Like I said, <coughs> some, like... Um, you know, Felicia's husband like beats her to death with a fireplace poker, yeah. and there, and then there's like gross shit, like you know, throwing up cherry pits all over. And actually, uh, Jack Nicholson does that too at the end, just like throws up fucking cherry juice and shit like that over everybody in the church. And he kind of gets all like monstery toward the end, and they do like voodoo on him, like make like a wax doll, like to get rid of him and stuff. So the closest thing to it would be Wolf. Yeah, so I kind yeah, cool. I feel like and that came that's out like the same way. Yeah, that's the same way where it's yeah. kind of like kind of like a love story and kind of funny, kind but of then like a chip but flag, also kind of like with horror elements. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of like a rich people movie. It's yeah, well, of, yeah, yeah, like a kind of like a yuppie sort of movie, yeah. which this one kind of is too. <laughs> and I just feel like you don't I don't know. It's like it's so weird you don't really see movies like that anymore that are just kind of these like you're not really sure exactly what to call them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they're not they just have aspects of so many different genres. But in this case, I think it works, though. But I can see how there are a few things about this that um, are a little bit weird. And I was watching like a. Um, like another review of it with uh, reviewers that were probably, they weren't young, young, but they were like younger than me. And the girl had seen it before, like lots of times, but she was showing it to her boyfriend, co-host, whoever, and he had never seen it before, but he ended up really, really digging it. Even though he said, man, this movie is like so weird and like not at all what I was expecting, like given the trailers. So it is like the tone of it is just kind of like very, very strange. And I had forgotten I don't think I thought it was strange in the 80s because there were other movies like this. But watching it now, I still really like it. But I was like, wow, this is like a way weirder movie than I remembered. You know what I mean? It's just so strange, like the tone of it. Yeah, they did like four or five of these around this period. That's what I'm thinking. And yeah. so nobody really thought it was all that odd yeah. back then, I guess. Another one that was kind of adjacent would be like Death Becomes Her. Kind of like this. Yeah. A little wackier, though. More clearly a comedy. But, yeah, that that one I would pretty yeah. easily. That one's like a black comedy. Right. It has horror elements too, but that's mostly a black comedy. And I will say that I think Death Becomes Her is largely more successful than this one. Like it just in terms of like what it was trying to do. And for, I love I fucking love Death Becomes Her. I think we've covered that before. But yeah, like that one's much more obviously like a comedy. This one's a comedy too, but some, I don't know. It has like some kind of strange tonal things yeah, going on. Yeah, something about this movie, Wolf, also seems to, for me, kind of tonally, was kind of seemed like it was linked in with fucking Dangerous Liaisons. Remember that? I love Dangerous yeah, Liaisons. But was, Although that is not funny in the slightest. It's not funny in the slightest. <laughs> it's almost kind of like they were targeting the same audience. Or at least, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen it. But I remember that movie kind of coming to mind watching this. 
Dangerous Liaisons is great, yeah. by the way. Maybe because Michelle Pfeiffer is in there maybe, as well. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why. Right. I didn't realize that. She's in yeah, there. Michelle Pfeiffer's in it. She's not like, right. she's kind of one of the main, she's not one of the main two characters because that's John Malkovich and Glenn Close, but she's like one of well, the... Well, there's also, you know, it's rich people in palaces and they're having all these weird affairs and it's all twisting around. They're fucking yeah, maybe that, over maybe and that's all this where... intrigue and stuff. And it's kind of like... They're grubby, dirty people, but but they're in these real elevated settings. These <laughs> but really, when you analyze them from a moral standpoint, standpoint, they're fucking degenerates, you know. And that's basically like saying that's what a witch is, like a degenerate, really, you know. But they're in living in finery. Yeah. That's all Jack is, or you know, with the fucking the devil. He's he's kind of a I won't call him a piece of shit, but just like a fucking really just more like an average Joe. The way he was acting, when he got butt hurt and shit, getting all vindictive. Yeah, that's the thing. You know it's I mean? like at first, really, yeah. I mean, he's really just kind of an average dude. He's you know? kind of like he's a likable character, yeah. even though he's diabolical. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, cause I was waiting for you to do that. But um, like at first, you know that he's manipulating each woman. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You know that he's doing that. It's very, but they're probably aware of it too. But he's just so good at it that they're just kind of like, all right, I'll allow it. But that's the thing. It's like, it's almost kind of like, even if he wasn't the devil, he was just like this really shitty dude that was like really, really awesome, like at first, and was just kind of like, oh, you're so cool, and I'm going to elevate you, and blah, blah, blah. And then like the second, you'll be like, hey, maybe we shouldn't see each other anymore. And then he gets like fucking, he goes balls out and just fills your bed full of snakes and <coughs> gives yeah. you like horrible hemorrhaging that'll kill that's, you that's and the shit way it like is. that. Just that's cause, what I mean. Just because just cause the dude's got a whole shit ton of money, and just because he's got a lot of skills and charm doesn't mean he's a good person. Right. You know? Well, well, and he obviously isn't because yeah, he's the devil. Right. And then the only the only way they can get him to stop fucking with them, like, and particularly my, Michelle Pfeiffer's character, Suki, that's the only way they can get her uh, to stop hemorrhaging and stop being in pain is to go and kiss his ass again. Yeah. Um, but then they kind of, like, <coughs> you know, kind of conspire together. They're like, yeah. yeah, we'll go in there and, like, pretend we're friends again and then we'll fuck him over. Yeah, and all his negativity and shit, he was, he was feeling sorry for himself. He yeah. He was all fucking butt hurt and fucking all depressed. And, and he got all, like, like his hair is all yeah, fucked you know, up, and he's like sitting around eating ice cream and getting fat. <laughs> so it's not like it's some kind of demonic fucking right. evil or anything. It's just more like you know, like a regular dude, dude like a bitch, dude. Be a right. Dude, you know. Well, see, that to yeah. me, that's like the funniest aspect of the movie is yeah. that even though he's he's supposed to be the devil, right? Yeah, he had all but, the human frailties. But he had all the same human frailties, and like you know, <laughs> the the women told him, "Hey, we can't see you anymore," and like. Like you said, he's sitting in front of the TV, like yeah. eating frusen glaja, watching yeah. Price is Right, yeah. and shit feeling, like that. Feeling sorry, feeling sorry from somebody he's, he's all like grubby. Devil. Looking. He can go out. He's got all this money, you know. And he, <laughs> he can call in call girls all fucking day. You know right. I mean? and he's worried about these three random women. Right. Really, that, uh, but see, that's what to me that was what was funny, and I think that's kind of like where some of the source of the of the comedy was coming from is that yeah. you wouldn't expect someone as powerful as the devil to get yeah, all yeah. hung up yeah. on these three women who just called him and said, hey, we don't want to see you anymore. Right. You wouldn't expect that. So, like, to me, that's why it was funny. And then he just went off on this big fucking rant, and he's in that church, like, talking about women and, like, God, like... And did, get, the, did he do it to us on purpose? Basically, the movie ends, he he has to go back to hell, but he can still, you know, commune with the living and, and appear and shit. And he's trying to basically... They show kind of a fucking... Basically, he's trying to get custody of the kids. Yeah. Basically, basically, <laughs> That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get joint custody, basically. I, I think the implication was that the reason that he could come back, but he only came back on the TV, like, to see the babies... I think the reason I think they implied that because there was a scene before that where all three of the women were sitting around with all the kids and Susan Sarandon's character Jane she was like thinking about him and shares like hey like we can't think about him when we're all together or we'll conjure him back because that's how he yeah. came in the first place and she's like oh well I still want to think about him blah 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 but they try not to but I guess just them doing that 
like all three of them thinking about it like for a for a minute he could like he TV. was able to come back on the tv but maybe not in the flesh that was the implication yeah. that i got he anyway couldn't fully manifest right because they yeah. didn't because they cut it to like nipped it in the bud because yeah. yeah he came there because they conjured him even though they weren't aware that that's what they were doing because they mm -hmm. didn't weren't aware that they had powers at that point but yeah the end of, it's really weird because like the end of this gets really really strange because up to now, it's been, like I said, kind of like a magical... There was a movie called Practical Magic, too, <clears> that I kind of feel like... It wasn't as over-the-top as this one. I, I saw it, but I don't remember that much about it. it was, and it was more chick-flicky. Yeah. But I kind of associate it with this one, because I think they came out right around the same time. I think that had Sandra Bullock and maybe Nicole Kidman in it, I want to say. But it was a similar kind of thing, like middle-aged women or whatever, if I remember correctly. Like, finding their power through witchcraft or whatever. But it was a lot more... Oprah friendly or whatever. Whereas this one, like I said, kind of goes <coughs> weird, like at the end, like when they start doing the spell, like with the doll and he gets like fucking thrown all through the car and like he, then he ends up all fucked up looking and then he goes all giant and it's like this big claymation. <laughs> Yeah. Like Jack Nicholson thing, like with a weird mouth and then he turns into this little. I, you know what? I didn't realize what that was when I was younger. Like, when they look out the window, like, after they throw the wax doll into the fire and it melts into little pieces, I thought, oh, he just shrunk down because they burned him or whatever. But when I was looking at it, when I watched the movie last night, I was like, you know what I think that is? I think, I think that's, yeah, or a mandrake root. Okay. I thought it was, because it has his face on it, but okay. it looked like a mandrake. And because, you know, like, the mandrake root, they use that a lot in witchcraft spells because it's a plant yeah. but it looks kind of like a person sort of okay. if, you, if you squint um so i, I thought, thought it was a homunculus it, it could have been that too yeah. it could have been that too but it looked planty to me okay. i don't know i could Might totally be, right. be wrong mandrake. but i that's kind of what i the vibe likely, that i got more from likely it. it's a mandrake now but yeah it. so so yeah the the shit gets like really really strange toward the end but i mean i still really really like this movie um like you said i i'm glad you brought up death becomes her because that's kind of like a similar i mean it's not Similar, similar, but it's kind of the same kind of vibe, I guess. Well, and Death sort of. It's a little more friendly, a little more fun. It's a little more fun. Even yeah. though a bunch of shit happens and it's bad, it's, it's still more fun. This one is a little darker. It's more, the, the, the tone is more like Wolf. Yeah, this yeah. one and Wolf are would be like a good yeah. double feature. Because, like yeah. I said, not only do both of them have Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer, they're both kind of dark. But they're both kind of like, yeah, yeah like yuppie fantasy. Yeah romance things with horror elements and comedy. Yeah, and it's like 25% or 30, 30% chick flick, probably. Yeah, <laughs> with 30% chick About flick. About 30% chick flick. It, there is a chick flick element, element to, it. to it. There is, yeah. But it's not so much that dude couldn't like it, all right? It's a good movie. Yeah. It's a good movie. Um, I didn't really like it that much, but I, I recognize it for what it is. It's a good movie. It's just not, you know, everything's art, you know, and, and it's just, it's just not my kind of movie. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. It's a good movie, but it's not really my kind of movie. I mean, I love all the acting performances in this. I mean, this, yeah. the cast in this is fucking incredible. I love the score, which was uh, John Williams, actually. <coughs> I think he might have got an Oscar nomination yeah. for this score. I really like the score of this. I, I might have had it on a uh, cassette tape now mm -hmm. that I'm thinking about it. Um, and I really still like um, scenes from this. I think it's slightly, slightly too long. Like, maybe some of the stuff could have been uh, trimmed out. And maybe I would have liked it if I'd gone, like, slightly darker, like the book. Yeah. Although I did kind of like I think one of the things I didn't like about the book was that it seemed like a little more mean spirited. I didn't like that the women like immediately were just kind of like, yeah, let's like fucking kill some people. I kind of like that they sort of got finagled into it. You know what I mean? More. I don't know. Like maybe it was just the writing of the book that I didn't really like. And it's been a long time since I read it, so I don't remember. But I remember liking the movie better. Now, I like this movie better than Wolf. I like Wolf yeah. too, but the, the, yeah, they are very similar, I like put in them tone. About the same. I really didn't like either one of them. Yeah, but I like, good, but they're good movies. Yeah, I it like this one. On. Probably I like this one a lot more because I've seen this one a lot more times. Like Wolf, I've probably only seen like two or three times because I saw it one time and I was like, oh, that was all right. But this movie, for some reason, like I really dug it. Like I just really liked the three women's interaction. I really liked Jack Nicholson just like fucking hamming it up. I mean, he seemed like he was fucking born to play this role, yeah. and he seems like he's having a blast. Yeah, he's great to watch in this. Yeah. 
It was oh. supposed to be Bill Murray first, actually. Bill Murray was supposed to play yeah, that, that the devil, which might have worked too. And he he was actually gonna do it, but then like he had to bow out at the last minute. The thing that I don't really like about this movie and Wolf also is that they just try to. It, the movie feels like it's trying to be more than too many genres at once. That's kind of the way it feels to me. It's not with. It's not in a clear. But you know, some people will love that. It just depends on. Yeah, how, on some it depends on it. how it's done. Right. I like cross genre stuff if right. it's done well. Sometimes it can be uh, jarring. I would have liked this to have been a straight up horror adventure with a, a lot darker and a lot worse things should have happened, and then the whole kids should have, you know, the babies should have happened, and they should have been a little more sinister. I think they should have had a very apocalyptic ending, like they were, like you know, like the devil's taking over the earth, you know. I think it would have been a lot better. Should have gone full Rosemary's Should Baby at the end. <laughs> full Rosemary. That'd have been kind of cool, actually. Now that yeah. I'm thinking about it. That's how I would have done it. But I understand that's not what that's not the audience they were targeting. They were right. they were targeting an older, softer audience. If you ask me. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? They weren't targeting the kids that were watching slasher movies and watching fucking uh, uh, the damn Omen series or anything. You know, but I'd have gone like the Omen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that might have been that might have been a good direction to go. Right. Kind of That's like the only I mean, final conflict type of deal, you know. And fucking the priests are going, damn, the devil's fucking got all these kids. How are we gonna stop them? You know. Yeah, he keeps. And then the kids have powers and shit. Yeah, they should have had the little kids with powers. Maybe they should have had horns for all I know. You know, they something crazy. I'd have gone fucking crazy with this. Well, shit. now Rosemary's Baby. They didn't show this in the movie, but in the book, Rosemary's Baby had horns. Yeah, yeah. right. They didn't show that in the movie. But yeah. that it, it is they in the book. Been clearly it is in the book. I think they should have been clearly demonic. Yeah, that would have been super. But they fun. should have been cool looking. Yeah, you know what I mean, like good looking, but fucking demons. Devil yeah. babies. Yeah, <laughs> just a little yeah. like tails of fucking glowing shit. yellow eyes and stuff. You yeah, know? fucking yeah, baby born with my debt with the devil. Beard. <laughs> They're born with beards. You know, that just fucking funny. A little pointy beard. That yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like like that little cartoon of the devil. Yeah, that had the little like the little yeah, red, yeah, yeah. the little red one. Yeah. that'd have been super funny. But yeah, the th- I mean, the thing about it, they could have actually made a sequel, you know, with yeah. the, with the three kids like grown up or when they were kids or whatever. That would have been kind of funny. Yeah. But I do kind of feel like yeah, w- like when you said Death Becomes Her, um, which you know, kind of similar, but that one was more clearly, like I said, in some ways darker and in some ways more a comedy, but a black comedy. Whereas this one had black comedy in it too, but was still kind of like tonally not as consistent. Let's yeah. say that. It didn't bother me. It still doesn't bother me. But I can see how if you're watching the movie, like, I, you know, I thought this was a romantic comedy or I thought it was like a witch fantasy or I yeah. thought or I thought it was a horror movie. And I'm like, it's all those things and more. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know what I mean? The target generation in 87 was boomers. So so a lot of the themes and issues that they're... That, that 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 are important to these characters are boomer issues. You can t- tell tell. You know what I mean? It's just. But like I said, it, it it it's aged well. It's still an entertaining movie. It's not my kind of movie, but it is a good quality movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, can I recommend it. Yeah. You know, it's just for it's just not really my thing, but it might be your thing. I had a lot of fun like rewatching this one. Actually, in the two thousands, like two thousand seven or something like that, they actually made a series. Um, based on Witches of Eastwick, but from everything that I've heard, like it wasn't even like as dark mm. or as fun as the movie was. Yeah. So they went even more like in the Oprah friendly direction. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So, which sounds probably like I don't need to see it, but yeah. I still really do like this movie. You and call it Oprah friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. That like super super womany kind yeah, of like that's not. What, that's you know. that's what this movie and Wolf always gave me. That that's a good way to. Yeah. Describe it. That that's that was nothing against women. Obviously, the, I am a woman. Boomer, you was, know what I mean. It was the when boomer I say that. Oprah crowd. Yeah, it's from, like that. From Eighty-seven kind of thing. is who who they were. Which they I were. don't usually like, but uh, I mean, but I can see what you're saying. Like this movie probably. Yuppie. This movie was kind of targeting that. I mean, John Updike <coughs> as an author. Uh, always kind of like seemed like he was aiming for that demographic too like not just women but i mean just anybody in that kind of like upper middle class yeah sort of thing um i kind of feel like i've only read a couple of his books but that's from just from my understanding yeah the, the that crowd has now matured into basically the chicks on that on that program the view that's that same generation they were targeting them back when they were in their 30s 
that's what this movie was targeting. Yeah. Back when they were in their 30s. But like I said, and that's, girls my age yeah. in the 80s were teenagers. Were teenagers. Um, so. Well, they still responded to this like yeah. in some ways. Well, there was crossover. There was crossover, yeah. And it, in, in those days, it was a contemporary movie, so it didn't really seem out of place. Yeah. The, uh, the movie, I remember that movies like this seemed real hip and real elevated and real cool at the time. There was a... Because... There was also movies like Fatal Attraction that were kind of targeted towards that same boomer crowd. Yeah, they were good. That had horror elements to it, and, th and then those had, then that had spinoffs. So it was kind of like this yuppie kind of. What else was like that? It's like classy horror. Classy horror. Because right. you didn't really see. I mean, in the '80s, horror was still seen as like a teenager yeah, genre because like it was like Friday slasher movies and shit like that. Yeah. So whenever you saw something like *Death Becomes Her*, or like, <laughs> even though I think that was a bit later, yeah. or like *Witches of Eastwick*, which had horror elements to it, but had all these really big stars and was like a Fatal big Hollywood attraction. thing. Yeah, like, shit yeah. like that. So uh, I think that *Pacific it, Heights* wasn't that that other one? Yeah, Pacific yeah. *Pacific Heights*. And that might have been like early 90s. early 90s. I kind of and Fatal Attraction, I think, was 1990 also, but 90? right around the same. I mean, yeah, you know, 87, 80, 80, 87, just a couple 90, years couple later. Years. Yeah, that same. So thing. I kind of feel, yeah, it's like horror movies, but for the older crowd. Yeah, because you couldn't you know, like older people back then. Nowadays, it's, <coughs> the distinction has disappeared. Yeah. But in the 80s, you didn't get like right. 35, 40 year olds going to see slasher movies. Uh -huh. But they would go see something like this, which is, you know, has horror elements to it. But you're allowed to see it because it's like a yeah. real movie. Nowadays, generation differences aren't as pronounced as what they used to be. Right. Yeah. There so. are differences between Gen Z and X, and but it's not. It's not. It's not as big. Anything as like it between used to be. like my grandparents' generation and Gen X. Yeah, it was like a mat. That was like a chasm. Yeah, and boomers and Gen X was fucking. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, but even your grandparents was like they're like from another fucking country. Yeah. They were like from China a thousand years ago. That's that was their thinking. Yeah, but it's like nowadays, you know. I nowadays I watch videos by <coughs> you know people in their twenties and stuff like yeah. that, and they don't seem that different. No. Like their attitudes don't really seem all that different. So. It's not like it used to be. But yeah, it's this definitely probably was, you know, targeted toward an older crowd, but I still really dug it. And uh, you know, it's actually on I thought it was on HBO Max when I first put it in the poll, but then when I went back it wasn't there, but it's actually on Tubi for free, so that's even better because you can watch it without uh, without any, uh, you know, paying for it, even though you got to watch commercials. But, I mean, if you guys have seen it, like, let me know what you think about it. Um, like I said, I used to love this movie back in the old days, so I was, like, kind of happy to see it again. And I feel, I still think it holds up. Um, it's not, I don't love it quite as much as back then, but I still loved it almost, almost as much, because I really liked all the acting in it and all that kind of stuff. It's a good quality flick. It is, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let us know what you think about it in the comments, and that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye.